my own question, huh? Won't he will? Huh? Yes, he will. Walk with me. Walk. Walk with me. Walk. Walk with prophet. Walk. Walk with prophet. Walk. I see you walking with him. I see you walking with him. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Ooh. Walk with me. Walk with him. Jesus. He's already been walking with him. Walk with me. He blessed me. He, he blessed me. He blessed me. He blessed me. He blessed me. And he kept me from all. Say thank you, Jesus. I said, clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Just before, just before you sit down, I want you to hug three people and tell them you're getting a miracle tonight before you leave here. Then you may be seated. Our God is an awesome God. I said our God is an awesome God. I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, Savior, do not pass me by. I haven't been in a tent meeting in a long time. My grandmama, if she was alive and she was in this tent meeting, she would say, walk with me, Lord. Walk, walk with me. Walk with me. enough I got saved in a meeting like this January the 4th 1979 on a Saturday night gave it over to the Lord and he worked it out look at somebody and tell him didn't he work it out now I've enjoyed everything and I've been here from the beginning but I think we should thank God for the gift in Lady Pope tonight. Come on, y'all can do better. Lady Pope, you are special. Special gift from the Lord. And thank you for setting the entire atmosphere. It's been set since the beginning but she just put icing on the cake. Now, now I know y'all praying for me. Because it's not easy doing what I'm doing tonight after you've been in the emergency room for 11 hours and still got on the plane. I got on the plane because I said, let, let me have a little more monitor, some clarity up here, some gain. I said, Brown has a healing ministry. All right, y'all must not know your pastor, but. So I said, I don't know what day I'm gonna get it, but I'm gonna get it though. 
Because the God I serve, he's able. Somebody ought to jump up and just shout, he's able. Your neighbor, somebody shout hallelujah real loud. We are actually making the devil mad because we're taking it to the streets. There are people here in the gospel tonight whose faces we may never see. But the Bible said he sent his word. Am I right about it? And his word healed them. Now, I don't want y'all to get too quiet because I'm going to teach and let you go. But somebody shout glory as loud as you can. <laughs> Whose last name is the name Bland? Who's Bland? Y'all have to come out front and talk to me. I'm not going to look for you, okay? This is a tent. You don't want what God has for you? Okay, then talk to me. If I told you, and you would have to run a little bit, you're not that type of person, but I'm going to make you one tonight. No one's getting a miracle without effort. Are you married? So if I told you that when you walk across here and there that God's going to give you, it's almost like three salons. Oh. Stop. You will have two other partners specializing in, specializing in something as you specialize in braids. Something about, oh, okay, yeah. How long have you been doing hair? Two years? That's very short to, to become this wealthy woman of God that I see that's about to happen. Are we jealous or are we happy for her? Yeah, we got enough room to run. We have enough room to run. I'll, I'll be standing and sitting as I do my job. When Sister Pope was singing, wave at me, where is she, has she gone? When, when you were singing, I didn't understand what I was seeing, but when you walked around the tent, I kept seeing loads of brick. And I said, God, what is that? Is that a solid ministry? Is that a solid marriage? He said, no. He said, tell her that I don't apologize, but I've been taking my time, but tell her within the next few months, go look for her new home again. Because the Lord says the deal is going through. And someone with a loud mouth and clapping hands use it to the glory of God. That's what we're out here for. This home, this home is going to change a lot of things in your life. All the things you should have had for the past eight years. God says, tell you, it's as good as done. And if 30 of you believe it, clap for her and her success in Jesus' name. Now, I don't know if I'm talking to, to someone on Facebook or in the building, but your last name is Payne. What happened? No, but you know a pain? Where? Oh, then one of you need to come out. I don't know what to tell you. I can't see through the tent. We in a tent meeting. Matter of fact, 
tell the one that works for a dentist or something to come out. How you doing? What do you do for a living? I'm looking at the scrubs. Oh, you're a dentist. Huh? All right, good. So how's Darkus? Who's Darkus? All right. Born sometime in April or somewhere around there. April the 15th, 1971. He said, come on, man, stop playing. The Lord told me to expose to you this tonight, Brother Doc, and both of y'all, what is it, Derek? Right. And the Lord told me to tell you something, and you can jump even though that's not you, but 50 people will jump for you. The Lord says, tell him when I'm done, he will own three private practices. He'll own three. And one is not in this city at all. Are y'all helping him or are you just looking at him? Have you and your wife built a home yet? You have one? Did you build it or moved into it? All right, because the Lord said, tell him, because he obeyed and literally he believes tonight, because most people don't, but the Lord said, because you believe tonight, and you came not to doubt, but there's so much fake stuff going on, man. But the Lord said, but because you believe to tell you, there's a rich couple building a house that's going to get a divorce. They're going to stop building it. You're going to find the house, take over, and move you and your wife in. This house has everything that both of you could ever desire. And someone that is not jealous, clap your hands, open your mouths, and get as loud as Memphis can hear us. It's a great thing when men praise him. It's a great thing when men praise him. Do y'all have kids? Girls? How many? Two girls? And how old are you? 53? Two girls. God's, God's, God's special wealth gift is now being placed upon the oldest girl. God says, I'm doing this as a prayer to answer for y'all. Because all of the gifts and intelligence and etc. was in the baby. But God says, I'm about to put angels around the eldest one and make sure her steps are ordered by God. And somebody that has children that you want to see blessed, thank God for Brother Derek's children. All right, thank you, sir. And the lady with the braids, you said your name was what? I can't re remember anymore. And what's your first name? Tanil, and it's Blaine, Bland. Oh, okay. Because I'm looking for Blanton. <laughs> Tiffany? <laughs> the Lord said, tell her whatever she wants. He said, tell her, don't look for a prophecy. Tell her, prophesy to herself. God said, the square footage, whatever you want, just ask me. And y'all sound a little jealous now, but I'm walking through it.
You married? Have you been married? Because the Lord said that once you scream, your man dropped through the top of the tent. And the Lord said, this one ain't broke. Y'all ain't talk at all. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Now y'all have me to them, to them night, so get out of me what you can. Because I can't promise you how long I'll be here. Bushun. Is that how you say it? Is that a nickname? S-H-U-N? Who's Miss Smith? Where is she? Is she here? I want to look at the camera. Let's have some fun. And I want to say to Miss Smith, hold on, do we have any other Smiths in here? If there's a Smith in here, run out. All right, stay there. I want to say to the one in the camera that if you would have come and you're a, you're a middle-aged lady, no, no, I already got one. If you would, what's, what's your name? You have any children? You have a boy? All right, I'm going to have to split this because I was about to give everything for you to him. No, don't say that words. Don't let nobody give away words. You all, you all right? Where's your son? How close are you to him? Real? Huh? He's the only one, and how old is he? He'll be, oh, tomorrow. That's what God is speaking. All right, well, listen to this. It's just going to have to be fun. You have any children? Two. Boys or girls? boy and a girl, and where are they? One here and one in Texas. All right, this is what I'm going to say to both of you. May not excite you, but God said, first tell Miss Smith and yourself that I'm going to soon erase all of your debt. You will not have any debt because of the business that I'm putting in you. I'm no debt at all. Two, God says, I'm giving that boy a double dose of the Holy Spirit for his birthday while we're here. But what I want to say to you, because I didn't know she was here, is you're about to get a few tickets. You're going to have to take some flights. You're going to take a few flights. You're going to meet people who you should meet and people that you've never met. And God says, tell him, if he thinks that my gift and my calling is something, wait till his come out. God says... The real preacher is walking in front of me right now. And somebody's jealous, and I don't know why you jealous. God said, when I finish finding you your properties, with an S, properties. Raban soto You don't ask God for much, but when you do, it's serious. So what I'm going to have all of you do, especially some men in here, at least five of the men in here that are not jealous, and the women, we're going to scream for the success of this man. The next time we see him, we will be blessed. Come on, do better. You may be seated. Y'all come get somebody while I'm getting ready to preach. Thank you. I want you to look at your neighbor, and I want you to say these three words to them. And if they don't get excited, then scoot over just about three inches. 
but mean it when you say it and watch their pattern of behavior. Just tell your neighbor, paid in full. <laughs> Come on, you that are out there in our virtual space, just type in the lower thirds and scream in here one more time. Paid! Paid! Paid in full. We'll be back. Now, I know that a lot of you want to just dance and shout and think that that's how we affect the community. But we affect the community by them hearing that we are also lovers of the word of God. We are not rappers. We are not hard metal band people. We make joyful noises. We dance unto the Lord. But at the end of the day, the question is, is there a word from the Lord? I'm looking for a healthy group now. I said, at the end of the day, y'all find me a higher chair tomorrow because I feel short. But I'm going to make a statement, then I'm going to take you to a scripture, then I'm going to embellish on that scripture, then I'm going to... Uh, break down that scripture, then I'm going to hoop on that scripture, and then we're going home. And if you want me to stay tomorrow, you got to push me tonight. But what I want to first open up by saying, which is a harsh statement, but to those who push me, God will make you dead free, and that's this. There are people in the world and in this tent and around the world and in social media that are viewing this experience that may never believe what I'm about to say, Pop Brown, and that is a lot of preachers are going to hell not for sin, but for not preaching correctly. We have too many ringmasters from the circus. But not enough casting out of devils. We're in the world because the world needs to see the power of the church. Let me talk to talkers. These signs shall follow them that believe. I'm talking to real preachers. In my name. They shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, lay hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. And if they have drank any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall take up serpents and scorpions. We have to stop showing the world our entertainment only. They must see that the church is still the place where they can come and watch their lives be transformed by the power, I don't hear nobody, of Jesus Christ. I'm going to say something until some old folk talk. What can wash? They don't want to help me. Away my sins. Some of y'all hiding from me, but I'm coming. Nothing. But the blood of Jesus, people don't even say the blood no more. What can make me whole again? Nothing. But the blood of Jesus. The church has left 
each other. Give me about 15 minutes to talk and you bless me. We have left each other naked and uncovered because of a spirit of jealousy. Today I asked God, why am I here? He said, normally when you come, I meet you in the building. And everything I meet you for has to do with the ministry. He said, but now that y'all dare to come outside, I'm not meeting you for church. I'm meeting you for the world. And the church needs to find the message for the world. For God so loved. I'm a, he didn't love just no preachers and evangelists and pastors. He, he loves the drug addict and the drug dealer, the pimp and the prostitute. Y'all get quiet if y'all want to, you hear? If you're going to bring me outside, you better act like you know why we out here. Because we ain't out here to save the saved. We out here to save the lost. But some of y'all can't talk their language because you too sanctified. Or maybe you just have amnesia and forgot that you're not perfect. I might as well say this. Y'all ain't going to believe it, but just push me. There are some folk in here that claim they're saved that are crackheads. Liars, adulterers, homosexuals, lesbians. I know you don't believe it. It's not just in the street. It's in the church. And I wish preachers would talk to me because y'all act like they ain't in your church. You can see them on the praise team, in the choir, on the instruments. They everywhere. And with all this tongue speaking and no life changing, The reason why, Pop Brown, I'll be preaching in a minute, the reason why the church is in such a catastrophic state, nephew, is because y'all are so excited that y'all finally know how to preach. Everybody's excited about having a name. and Most pastors don't have a street soul on their resume yet that they went out and got. We wait till they come in. They told me down in Orlando, they said that man talks to sinners and publicans and cigar smokers and weed people because I pastor in the hood. See, it's too quiet. I pastor in South Apopka, in the hood, equivalent to Compton, Los Angeles. Brownsville, Brooklyn, Detroit, Michigan. Y'all ain't talking to BMFs. Yeah, and, and, and I hate to tell y'all because y'all act like you got amnesia. We in the hood right now. Something can pop off in three minutes right across the street. We in the hood right now. And I went and won all of my musicians. Most of them were not from a church. They joined, got saved. Some of them had earrings in their ears. I know y'all ain't gonna like it, it's okay. They got crazy hairstyles. Now we don't have no more church clothes, it's just clothes. Brown, you don't dress for church, you the sneaker king. We, 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 we don't have no church clothes. But at the end of the day, how can you dare be disgusted by what the world is doing when you used to be them? All right, I'm about to stand up, but I'm not going to do it yet. I need three honest people. Y'all know good and well, some of us sin better than anybody. Okay, I know I did. And some of y'all just started after you got saved. You should have sinned while you were a sinner. The church is sending, we're going to read, 
a confusing message out to the world. And that is, they're not welcome. Because they don't dress right. They don't have church clothes. They, they may have a little older. I don't hear nobody. But when I grew up, alcoholics walked in the church. Prostitutes. Y'all ain't tell. They walked in the church. And about time they left. Now, let me tell you this. January the 4th, 1979, 8.36 p.m., I got saved at Kelly's Temple Church of God in Christ. And y'all don't like me testifying. But I had just had a fifth of Bacardi and two joints. See, I'm going to win the street. I ain't stunting y'all. Y'all got me outside. The very first time I came to your church, we had all the bloods and crimps and everybody up in that building. But I got saved after having a fifth of Bacardi, two spliffs. Look at some of y'all acting deep. I, I don't know what that is. Yeah, okay. It's medicinal marijuana. That's what it is. And what I ingested, the lick of the booze and the weed, I had on a leather bomber coat and an Applejack hat. I can't get nobody to talk. And I had the munchies from smoking, so I went to McDonald's for two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickle onions on a sesame seed bun. You ain't had no real weed if you ain't had no munchies. But I'm telling you, dipsy doodles and potato chips and soda. See, I'm trying to preach the, I'm trying to talk until the hip, hypocritical side of you leaves. so that this meeting can fully go in the direction of the street. Walked in that church, Mother Butler, Mother Brown, Mother Denham, Mother Granger. They said, take their hat off in the house of God. And from there, for three, four push me, they started saying the blood of Jesus. Now I'm born in church, raised in church, all I know is church. But I had a life outside the church, and I never lied and said I was saved when I wasn't saved. I wish I had some. I ain't been saved all my life, but I've been in church all my life. They got around me with that blood of Jesus, and then I heard one mother say this for whoever was screaming. She said, sick him, Holy Ghost. I said, sick him, Holy Ghost. All I know is a few minutes later, I was under row three and four. And I was trying to get up because I'm too cool. I was like, get up, Todd, and I couldn't budge. And then I understood what they meant when they called us holy rollers. We should be living such a life to where the world has a nickname for us. They did it on Pentecost. These men are drunk. Y'all not. To, and then Peter never said we weren't drunk. He said we are not drunk as ye suppose. Which means the Holy Ghost did have a behavior that looked like a drunkard. But some of y'all got the Holy Ghost and you so calm, cool, collected. I don't know if that's the Holy Ghost at all. Because the Holy Ghost from my grandmama said when I think of the goodness of Jesus there. There's something on the inside working. I'm almost there. I'm almost there working on the outside. Look at somebody and tell me I'm so glad I'm saved tonight. Now in admitting, in admitting that you're saved, I want to take you to a scripture. I want to braid the hair and go ahead and preach. Genesis chapter 9, verses 20 through 24. 
This is not just for you all in here, but those who are driving up and down the road, who are sitting in your cars with your windows down. It says these words, and Noah began to be a husband man, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank, y'all ain't going to like this, of the wine and was drunken. Look somebody and say, ooh, Noah got drunk. Now, I want to say this because I need about 50 of you to push me. He got drunk after God told him he was the only one righteous. See how church folk that go to church but don't read no Bible couldn't say amen? And some of you will let what God called you mean nothing to you after folks start putting labels on you. I'm going to say it like grandma say, talk about me as much as you please. I got help here. For the more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. Just because God calls you a thing don't mean you are that at that time. God, for three folk, is speaking to your potential. Like there are potential millionaires in here right now. And you that didn't talk, it ain't you. You know why? Because your sanctimonious self is suffocating the miracles that God's trying to get to you. You don't want people to think you're broke. You don't want to act like your bills are behind. You don't want to act like your children are on drugs. We all need a house call. Lord, go to my house. I'm not there. Walk with me, Lord. I've got help. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this tedious journey, I want Jesus hold my hand, Lord. Oh, I wish I had happy saints. Hold my hand. He was drunkard and he was uncovered within his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, told his two brethren without. Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it upon their shoulders, leave it heavy, and went backwards and covered I want to preach the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. And then the Bible says in 24 for Bible lovers, Noah awoke from his wine. This side not talking to me. Noah basically recovered from being drunk. And he knew what his younger son not saw did something. Y'all kept saying he saw his daddy's nakedness, but the scripture says he did something. Quiet in the middle now. Can't get no help. You don't prophesy. You don't sing. They won't talk to you. Awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Can I read this in the Message Bible? Thank you. You're helping me. Noah was a farmer, was the first to plant a vineyard. He drank from its wine and got drunk and passed out naked in his own tent. Now, let me pause and say this for three folk who will jump up. Some of you, I don't know how you can talk about people if you were not invited into their tent. Some of you only know what's going on with your neighbor because you're trespassing. 
Let me preach till Memphis talk to me. Their business did not get out. You made it your business to go in. I need this side to talk. This man is drunk in his own tent. Now, maybe I should, I should bring back some old school rules, Mother, Mother, Mother Brown and, and uh, Elder Frank, Rabbi Smith. Maybe I'll tell you this and see who will jump for me. When I grew up, if my mother and father's bedroom was closed, you can't just walk in. Now, y'all ain't got an answer. I want to know why we couldn't walk in. What y'all doing that we can't see? Which means for screamers, there are certain things that are allowed in your privacy that is not acceptable in public. I don't want to know what my mom and daddy doing. But the rule is for talkers, don't come in till you knock. Then the next rule is, if you knock, don't come in till I answer. Because we used to knock and walk in. I did not go back out. Now I want to give a word of prophecy. It's really a word of exhortation to 80 people in here who've had a hard few years because of the church. This is what the Holy Ghost says, because we're going to start filling the church with people from the street. Like, I could yell right now, and I can yell for a man called D. Mario, who's over there in a certain number project, who's listening, and I could prophesy from here across the street. But I want to say this for those who will scream. God said, any of you who had a bad experience with the church, he said, for the next few months, I'm getting everybody out of your business. I don't care who it is. And God says, I'm about to give you a clean slate. I wish I had pastors. I will, I will cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. This is what God said. And I will remember them. Now he didn't say your family won't remember them. He didn't say the church won't stop bringing it up. He said, but why are you worried about them when I'm the only one that has a heaven or a hell to put you in? Yep, somebody in the front row mad now because you want me to be very dogmatic. You want me to come out on the block and send everybody on these streets to hell. Yep. I was going to preach the sermon. I'm almost there called Lovers with Covers. Look at somebody and tell them I'm a lover with, with a cover. Look at folks trying to act like you don't know how to be a 1979 rapper. Let me put a scripture to that, and the first three that jump up, your life will change overnight. And that's this. It says, love covers a multitude. So the reason why the church can't really win the sinner, we don't have enough love. They don't want to keep sinning. They don't want to do the stuff you think. They want to be delivered, but we don't have enough love. Because the love the church needs to win the souls outside is you got to love me as I am first. I'm talking to talk. Love does not manipulate people and tell them until you live like this, don't call me. Love says I am the image of God and if you keep hanging around me, you soon going to act just like me. I'm sorry that I'm talking about worldly things and I ain't got no help here. But you don't have to do weed to get high. But if you hang around someone doing it, there's a thing called a contact. 
And the world tonight should be feeling a contact from under this tent that makes them pray tonight, makes them come out here tomorrow because the aroma that's in the tent is making its way down the block, round the corner. Tonight, this week, we're in a church without walls. And some of these street folk, you know they know y'all. They saw you at the club. You was at their house last week. Most of you sanctified tongue speaking women are dating street guys. Save women love sanctified thugs. Now y'all say what you want to say. You don't like Urkel. You want Stefan. All of those, hey, da, 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 da. they got homeboys as boyfriends. But the Lord gave me a subtopic, then I'm reading two paragraphs and I'll be ready to preach. My subtopic for those who will scream is this, no cover charge. I'm getting off this chair in a minute, but look somebody and tell them no cover charge. Who was Noah? I'm about to preach, Reverend Carlos. Who was Noah? Thank you in the front. Noah was a man that built an ark by the orders of God to save those who would come into it. I don't know if he could preach or not. I don't hear nobody, but he only won eight after preaching for 120 years. But he probably got disappointed. I want to run, but I can't. And in being disappointed, he probably told God, I've been preaching for you 120 years, and I think my ministry should be full. So God said, you got a problem with an eight-member church? Oh, y'all quiet. You, you don't know how to be faithful over few things? I want to preach. I wish I, you don't know how to make those eight feel like 8,000 people? He said, okay, I, can't, I, I really don't have a church. I'm going to fill your church overnight, but it's going to be filled with animals. People who live off of instinct. Who come and go as they choose. His ark is full. But the Bible tells you distinctly only eight souls were saved. A full ark, but only eight were saved. I don't know if it was his preaching. I keep bringing that up. But three folk catch me over here and scream. But all I know is the eight people was his original eight people. They're his family. All right, I'll go here because my nephews and them are not talking. The reason why the ark was not full is he was preaching a sermon that the world didn't understand. Y'all quiet. He kept talking about it's going to rain, but he couldn't explain it. It never rained in all of his life. He's building a big boat talking about something that he can't explain. And the reason why the church is not packed is we're preaching messages that we cannot explain. Stealing them from YouTube, Facebook. But we can't break it down. I wish I had people. And people in the world, they know cap when they see cap. Look at the old saints. What's cap? It means liars. can't preach to this generation and not understand their lingo. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say less. Just say less. Now, I see my friend is here. I'm about to stand in three minutes. Noah is not a drunkard. He's drunk that day. 
See, all the deep sanctified folk ain't say nothing. He, let me, let me not be scared. He is not a drunkard. Noah, I'm going to defend Noah like I would the streets. Noah is not an alcoholic. Talk to me. We only find him drunk one day. And how you going to judge me for something that you seen me do only one time? but not compliment me on the years that I have fought to be who I am. Y'all getting quiet now. You coming in on a weekday. Y'all see young people. On a W-E-A-K day, not a W-E-E day. You just caught me on a weekday. Now let me ask you something, Pop Brown. I wish I had preachers, but I can't find nobody. You people are being a little hypocritical in that while I'm preaching, you're not thinking about how real the scriptures are. What man in here would not think about, I'm going to see, having a drink or hitting a joint or a spliff if you were married to a woman in the Bible that never said anything nice about you? Hold on, let's pause. Y'all ain't talking. What has Miss Noah ever said in the Bible? To a man that just saved the whole world, to a man that God said is righteous, to a man who God gave a blueprint to, who a man that took her through the flood, to a man that took her to the top of her game, and we still never hear her say, baby, you all that. When did his son say thank you? When did his daughter-in-law say, I can't say thank you? Some of us had a bad day because we've not been appreciated. We've been overlooked. We've been ignored. We were there when you needed us, but wasn't nobody there when we needed you. And now that God is about to raise me up and take me to the top of my game, you trying to be my friend again. I wish I had talkers over here. If you can't stick with me while I'm down at my lowest point. Then please don't come around when God is elevating me to the top of my game. Back then you didn't want me. Now let me flip the switch and let me bring some gospel revelation in and to those who actually push me, you will see a change in your life by tomorrow. He, he built an ark. He started off laboring. Laboring. And then after, I'm preaching to you, and after he survives the flood, he goes from laboring to being fruitful. See, everyone's quiet. People still want you to hustle and have a hard way. But them hard days are coming to an end right now because God said to the flood survivors. And I'm about to really preach. For my yoke is easy. There are just some folk that don't believe you can be saved and have it going on. They synonymously have saved with struggle. The devil's attacking you because you're holy. Why can't God be blessing me because I'm holy? Why everything has to be attached to some tragedy? Can I preach for 10 more minutes? He goes from labor. Goes through his flood. Thank you, Jesus, for sending the world. After the flood, he's resting on the top of Mount Ararat. I want you to say this to your neighbor. If they don't talk, don't talk to them for 10 minutes. Just look at them and tell them, living on top of the world. You don't have 
have to sell drugs to live on top of the world. You ain't got to be a pimp, a prostitute, a stripper to live on top of the world. All you got to do is come to church and say, I went to a meeting last night and my heart wasn't right. And so it is our job to show the world that if they can get it the wrong way, we can get it the right. What he said, what does it profit a man? I got help over here. To gain the whole world. Now, Pop Brown, stay with me. He gets to the Mashandai. Uh oh, hold on. He gets to the top of Mount Ararat. When he gets there, God says to him, Time to change your description. You are now a farmer. He said, and you will be the first, I didn't hear no old times, to plant a vineyard. There are three things that come from grapes. One is grapes. Talk to me. Two is jam. Three is wine. I'm going to say it again until you tongue speakers talk to me. One is great which means something sweet I'm describing your next season the second thing is God is gonna give you enough to spread y'all to next I'm almost there the next thing is jam and jelly that whatever he's given to you will take care of your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren. I bless your seed and your seed seed. And you're going to get it because you survived your flood. Not because you played the lottery. Not because you went back on the block. But because you trusted God with all that you had. But the thing. Situation. I'm sorry, yes, I screamed. When I was in Brooklyn and I was a little DJ with some scratch boards and turntables, we yelled then. Why y'all get to church and act bougie, but when you was in the block, Satan got all the screaming. But the third thing was, and it tells you how he got drunk. And for three folk who jumped for me after, God will bless you. He was examining and tasting his product. Look at all the safe folk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. grapes were sweet. He knows if you squash them and put them in a jar and put a lid on it like grandma that you got some preservatives. And there are folk jealous of some of you because you look well preserved. Look at folk. And the reason why you ain't screaming is you don't know God's about to take the lid off. But right now, you feel like you've been on punishment for a long time. Lord, when I'm going to get out of this? When I'm going to get out of this? When you going to bless me? God said after this week, he said, all I need you to do is understand I may not come when you want me. But I'm always. I know I'm being redundant, so let me rewind and say it for the last time. You're about to have a sweet season with enough to spread. But now, Pop Brown. Let me hear B just in case. Yeah, okay. But now, Pop Brown... 
What happens, I'm going to see who screams on this, when you leave what God gives you alone and take your hands off it? Because Noah didn't make the wine. The wine made itself. Because I gave it over to the Lord. Oh, y'all, it's called fermentation. Some people, I thought I had a good church, don't know how to handle some of you. They liked you during your first season of being sweet. They liked you when you had something to spread. But they didn't like you when you became overwhelmingly too strong for them. They can't handle the fermented you. They liked the broke you. They liked the bipolar you. They liked the evicted you. But they don't like the person that says, what God has for me. Bring this back up, I feel God. It is. For me. I know, without a doubt, are y'all helping me preach? That he will bring me out. Why? Because what God has for me, it is his last level is too strong for him. See, so when I took the grapes, all I had was good taste. When I did the jelly, it, it lasts a little longer. But this thing right here. It overtakes who I am. He went in, about to go to church, the privacy of his own room to test his new product. You better tell your neighbor if you know they're going to be rich, I got a new product coming out. Can I have the sound back the way you had it? And look at your name and tell them that new product is called me. Marvin Sapp said the bishop said I'm stronger. Wiser. Better. I need 50 of y'all to act like you don't care who's out here and repeat it like you mean. Tell them I'm stronger. Wiser. And better. I hear them helping me over here. Some of y'all that know that your home will be paid in full, school tuition paid in full, scream across the room and say, hey there! Tell them I'm stronger, wiser, and better. I'm almost there, Sean. You almost took me there. Noah! The Lord's here. There's an angel in the tent. No, for real. No, no. Them I see, I know so. There's an angel in the church. Mm -hmm. On this side. And I don't know why the Lord paused in the message, but the Lord said, tell a hundred of you, this angel is here to fight your battles. And you'll be able to say, through it all, come on, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. And I've learned to trust in God. And I've learned 
to depend upon his word. I want you to grab somebody and tell them, yes, I heard a lot of things about you. But you look like you're doing okay to me. And then I want you to look at that name and tell them, I must tell you the truth. It ain't always been like this. But the Lord shall perfect that concerning me. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in your favor. Y'all ain't preaching. He's working it out. For me, I feel joy coming now. Tell that neighbor, you should not have made it. You know you should be dead. You know you should be in prison. You know you should be in rehab. But when I look back over my life and I try to think things over, all of my good days, they outweigh my bad help me preach to your neighbor and tell him I can't complain cause tell him I know without a doubt that God's gonna bring me out when you say no cover charge you are saying that you can enter the building for free nothing comes out of your pocket and God said tell 50 of you after this revival Nothing comes out of your pocket. All you got to do is take me public. And when folks see you screaming and see you dancing and see you running, all you do is say, if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Just tell them I'm saved. Sanctify. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side. Grab a neighbor, pull him close to you, and say, neighbor, please don't take this wrong. But tell him you're looking at somebody who's been through hell and high water. That if I did not take it to the head, I'd have lost my mind by now. But I had a little talk with Jesus. I told him all about my troubles. He had my faithful cry. And he answered by and by. Help me preach to a neighbor. Because they won't help me preach back here. And say, get a little prayer wheel turning. And all that fire burning. I haven't been able to walk on my foot for three days. Just another talk with Jesus will surely make it right. Shake another neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, you may not believe this, but the angel that's here tonight is going to fight your battles while you enjoy your next level. Don't look over your shoulder. Don't fight for yourself. Don't protect your name. But just give God glory and give God honor. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. Can y'all preach to another neighbor and say, neighbor? Tell them God has a blessing with your name on it. Tell them by Friday, everything you desire, everything you prayed for, God's going to give it to you. He may not come when you want him, but he's an on-time God. Clap your hands and shout, he Just grab one person's hand and say neighbor. Come on, help me preach it out. Say neighbor. All I have for you tonight 
is five words from the Lord. And I'm going to test your spirit and see if you believe these five words. The five words are, it is done right now. Did you hear what I said? It is. I want a machine and die. Y'all stop practicing. Listen. Madiando Shanai. Gloria man shatae. Is shola my ansia. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Watch how I close, Dr. Brown. The Catabancio. Somebody shout glory again. I can't. I can't say everything that's going through me right now, but listen. Shalom Akoshibaya. I normally don't speak in tongues a lot in public. I do it at home. But when I do it in public, it's because I'm lost for words. There's some things I want to express that the Holy Ghost won't allow to come out in English. But some of you are about to go to the top of your game. And God says, only you know you don't deserve to be there. He said, but because of your sincerity, I'm stuck on this side. I was trying to duck it. Pop Brown, he takes the grapes. He spreads the jam. Look at me, I'm closing. But then he takes a little taste of what life does to something when you leave it alone. Look at somebody. If they don't get happy, don't worry, because that means that they ain't really here. Just tell them, leave it alone. Tell them, I know you want to deal with it. I know you know how to handle it, but leave it alone. I got some help coming from the streets now. Listen, 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 listen. You want to hear this? Make sure they can sound man with clarity. Here is what's going to shock you. He didn't do it to get drunk. He did it to taste his product and saw that what he had was strong. If I prophesy to one of these preachers and they jump and scream and y'all do you be blessed. Some of you need to know after this week, what God has for you is so strong you're going to have to sleep on it. Because everybody can't handle what you're about to say next. Because you've been holding it for a long time. Your next level of conversation is fermented. And only those who are at that level can handle what you're about to say. What you're about to preach. What you're about to sing. reason why some of your churches are not packed yet is because you're not a fruit juice church. You're a winery. 
And if you understand this is on my notes and 18 of you scream loud, you'll be blessed. You get the best when you take it to the bottom and leave it. And the older the year, the more it costs. So God's been have, having some of you wait 10 years while letting these $3 bottle of wines preach. The longer it waits, the more expensive it is. So the second prophecy to the closing prophecy for 30 Screamers is, after this week, look at your neighbor and tell him, I don't come cheap. Don't come cheap. God's about to give some of you millions because you gave all your little money away all the time to everybody. Never complain. Pay your tithe. Can barely pay your rent. And here is God saying, I got something strong for you. If I'm out here, I got to preach it like I'm in these streets, not like I'm in seminary. Last but not Shandai. Last but not least, yes, Lord. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Is there anyone in here who lives in Mississippi right now? All right, because the Lord just told me, and I can't prophesy to all you, but the Lord says that the angel that was sent here that will be here through the week is making a trip to every house in Mississippi. Now, I don't know what's going on. And three out of the seven of you are moving into a new home before Christmas. Yep, watch. No, we're supposed to take God public. He gets, apostle, he gets tipsy. Y'all call it two-thirds zooted, blasted. Drunk. You bougie folks say inebriated. You don't know nothing about none of them words. Gets inebriated, and he doesn't go out and party and sin. He goes to lay down. And he's laying, look at me, and he wants to lay down until he can recover. God said, by tomorrow morning, all of you that were going through something and you had long hangovers, God says, you're going to recover by tomorrow. You'll be over him, her, them, whatever happened bad, you'll be over it by 9 a.m. in the morning. What? I don't care how strong the addiction is. By 9 in the morning, you're going to wake up and the taste for it, the desire for it, the hunger for it will be gone. God says, tell them they don't have to ask to be delivered. I'm demanding it. Because at the level where they were on the floor is different from where the level that, that I'm taking them now. You will not make the same mistakes up here that you made down on the ground floor. Last but not least, as you're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God, you ain't got to hold them long, but if they are going to be debt free, you want to know them. I've seen a lot of millionaires who are in debt. I'd rather have a million. No, I've seen a lot of millionaires commit suicide. You can't pay for peace. Look at me, and please don't think I'm crazy. His youngest son comes in and saw his daddy drunk and naked. Look at me. He runs out and tells his other two boys. Oh, the Holy Ghost just hit me again. I got to say this for 10 of you who will scream for me and those who you want to see get miracles, and that's this. It is so good. That before his young boy started exposing him, everybody was gone. (laughs) 
God said, I'm going to kill it before it could ever kill you because I'm going to make sure that it has nowhere to go. Wasn't nobody. Wasn't nobody to tell. He goes and tries to get a group and he tells his other two older brothers, daddy drunk, look at me, and naked. The Bible says, y'all not happy. He went, they went and got covers. If we just knew how to cover these people. The liar, the homosexual, the truth. But if we just had some covers for these people. You got sermons, but do you have covers? Look at me. I got some folk from the block under the tent. Now, I see their faces, but five people catch this. They go in backwards, and they cover their father's nakedness. So when they talked to the young boy, Ham, Ham said, did you see it? They said, no. Ham said, he drunk and naked. They said, not to us. Look how quiet it's getting. Ham goes back in and says, oh, he's naked and drunk. They go back in and say, not to us. The difference in Japheth and Shem versus Ham for a screaming young person is he went in looking for something. The others went in knowing ain't nobody perfect, and they covered it. And how you going to dog the person that took us to the top? Y'all How do you talk about people who were there for you when nobody else was there? Just to keep your clean name. Out in these streets. You're holding the hand of a, a you're holding you're holding the hand of a debt free child of God. I want to say something to you. Touch him, pop, and let him see me. And y'all make a little room in case he has to run. Yeah, I want to say this to you when I quickened and looked off. The Lord said, tell him like this. I've been wrestling with him for the past three years. I've been bringing him into seasons, pulling him out of seasons, bringing him back into seasons, pulling him out of seasons. I've been taking his attention over here, then his attention over here from the marketplace back to the ministry, back to the marketplace, back to the ministry, to his children, back to the ministry, to his children, back to the ministry. I've had him doing something Something looks like a car detail, car wash. I don't know what's going on, but I see that too. You have that? Okay, so it's like a car wash, car dealership, back to pastoring, back. The Lord said, tell him this. If he fully believes me and runs not in the street, but to the street screaming, tell him these words. I'm going to give him what looks like a strip mall where he can put everything in one area. Are y'all jealous or y'all good? He in the middle of the street. That's where we're supposed to take it. To these streets. Hold on, somebody's telling me something like he just got a strip mall? He just got a strip mall in Jonesboro. All right, I'm not saying no more, but y'all hold hands. I, I'm, I'm not even bothering with you all. 
If I'm going on a plane tomorrow, you bless me and you know I did my best. Young man, what's your name? Javon, spell it. If I told you run out there with him, would you have? No, no, hold on. I'm asking you, would you have? I want to ask you a question. Did you go to college? Did you take a student loan? Because the Lord just said he's paying $42,000 worth of your student loan. And y'all still quiet, but we taking it to these streets. I see a lot of men here tomorrow in my spirit. God said he has something for men and women, but for the men. Hold their hand for the last time. What do you do for a living? You are a director of operations for UPS. How long have you been there? Six years. Can I ask you a question? I want to ask you a question. You seem to have some friends here. What is the next level from your position? Store owner? Oh, to own a store. Okay, I don't know if you answered my question, but I'm going to go back to it. Because I know you're speaking by the faith that you're passing everybody. What is the next position you get from the position you have now? Regional. Now you answered my question. And the Lord says, I'm making a certain white man quit. So you're about to get a phone call. Are y'all jealous or happy for each other? I want this church, Logic Church, and y'all visiting, look at me as you hold hands. You probably will think I'm retarded, but the angel is still here. I need y'all praying because the Lord said, and then I want you to jump because it's real. God says, your next mayor is whoever you name. So y'all be real careful with what you say. Y'all be careful with what you say. This person has turned out the person that's mayor or governor, huh? They turned out. What's that mean? They can't run no more. Female, male, well, I'm not gonna cause no trouble, but you men will catch this later. We are entering the year of the woman. It's not that they're going to overtake us. They're going to help us get to where we always should have been. Look at all these male chauvinists that didn't say anything. If I got married and she make more money than me, I'm not jealous. If she on a jet, can I use your plane? I am not. I need you to pray about this because God says you need to lay before him concerning politics in Memphis. He says, because I'm going to have them calling you as their prophet to ask, what should we do next? And God says, when the right person becomes mayor and et cetera, I hope somebody screams, God said, you can give them the four properties you want. They're going to make sure you get them. God says, tell you, 
Whoever I'm putting there, I'm putting there on kingdom purpose. Don't get jealous. He can get it for all of us. What do you do for a living? You. Talk to me. I want to um, say to you, you say you own a business, and it's what? Okay. I want to say to you something. Who else knows you closely? Are you married? Come out. God needs you two to start talking and going out on dates a little more because he's about to make y'all run into a $2.5 million contract. He said, but y'all have to start dating over. You have to go out. You have to go. And the reason why you got to go because it's her money. This is not coming from you. This is her money. And God said, I need to show her family that they were not right about you. God says, when I finish what I'm about to do. You have what the Bible calls a virtuous woman. You have one. Number two, when you came from behind that screen, this is for screamers, the Lord said, the old you stayed back there, the preacher came out. The old you ain't coming back from behind there. Hold hands for the last time, and I mean the last time. Tomorrow, we'll see if we can make it. Young man, what's your name? Based on the lead, on the lead. Stand up, please. You know, I live... I live in I live in Orlando, Florida. That's where I live. And 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 things are fairly nice there. What is your name? Your name is Orlando. Right. Listen. You went through some things over these past years that I can't talk about. But God is most impressed with you because when you talk to God, it's not that you're disrespectful, you're just straight. And a lot of things, believe it or not, that, that you're tired of in church, so am I. You're only tired, Orlando, because you're really a preacher too. You've known this for years. I wish I had talkers, bro. You've known this for years. See, you Memphis preachers that can preach, y'all don't know that y'all about to be replaced if you don't know how to talk to the lost. God said, I've got 7,000 others who have not kissed Baal, nor bowed. God says, tell you, now that you've passed your test tonight and you did not refuse what I had to tell you. He says, I want him, I don't know what this means. I want him to go by faith. It'll take a few months. Look for a new place to live because I'm about to restore to him his whole family. God said, I'm giving him his family back. Y'all ain't talk. And somebody with a loud mouth and happy hands. Stay with him, preacher, because what's on him, is it, it, is, it is more real than anything in here.
All right, this time I'm not going to look like a liar. Hold your neighbor's hand for the last time. No, no, we got another day tomorrow. I need to be in bed. Should have been in bed. But I gave you what I could beyond the threshold of pain. Hallelujah. And while he's standing up, the Lord said, take this home with you too for ten folk who scream after. God said, anything that would have been in the com computer is erased. God said, that, that's what was holding you back. Y'all ain't talking. God said, I'm putting my hand in the computer. The world needs to know that the church is still the answer. Let me talk to talkers. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Young man in the orange hoodie. It looks red or orange. Yes, yeah, step out. What's your full name? And what church do you belong to? GLC? Who's your pastor? Does this pastor know that you're a prophet? Uh-oh. Shabbatios. Kataya. You You said, I've not really been there to get near this man, but I need to because I'm a prophet and I need to know whether God is really using me or not. God says, give him till November the 12th. And God's going to open your spirit up and start showing people who you are. And somebody with a loud mouth ought to help that man. Oh, no, we taking it to the streets. If we're going to be out here, we ain't in punishment. We ain't staying in this corner. If I didn't have this problem, I'd show you. At my age, I'd show you. And I mean it. All right, you're holding the hand of a person you want blessed. Then I have to get to my room. Dr. Dentist, I can't wait to see you and your three practices. It's going to be super. Tomorrow, I want to talk about good success. Look at somebody and tell them good success. Good success. Good success. Would you get mad with me if, if I told you something? You sure? I don't take this road much with people, but I've been trying to avoid this corner all night. But the Lord says, if you get up here and just move a little bit on a serious word, God says, tell him, I promised him something and I'm going to do it even though people think he's crazy. Tell him, I'm going to give him his portion of the city, but I got to give him a wife. God said, and she been ready for over three years. Your other colleagues, associate preachers that are single are going to fail because of their flesh issue. They're going to fail. But as for you and your house, I'm not bullying you. You don't have to do it. But, and I won't even describe her because she's standing near you right now. And I'm glad she's fine. 
But God said, tell him, I have to erase every rumor that's falsely put on his name. The Holy Ghost will protect his ministry. His wife will protect him. Y'all ain't talking. I know that there are people who fear this marriage thing. And marriage is not the same. And I'm not that hyped about it. But I'm hyped about yours. What I just did, and maybe we'll talk before I leave, is I just put some covers on it. God said, tell him the prophetic word for his life, word, singular, is this, and they'll scream for you. New, new church, new house, new marriage, new. New, new, new. That's too quiet, but new. Give me your full name as it is on your license. No, don't look behind you. I'm talking to you. Derek Ryan. D-E-R-R-I-C-K or D E. Derek Ryan. And I know you because you call me on, but when I'm in the spirit, I don't know nobody. I'm being honest. Other people do, but I don't. This is what the Lord told me. The Lord said, because you allowed him to enter your home and you allowed him to change things drastically, tell him, I got three things for him. I'll give you the simple one first. One is, you're going to have a book that's going to go viral. The book somewhat is already written. I have no idea. Two, tell him, I'm going to build a conference around his name. And three, you can write all three of these down and y'all will scream. God says, tell him it's not necessary, but I'm giving him over 10,000 square foot of living house because I want him to see what I can do for him through him. God said, you and his conversation ends after this because now he's showing you who you've always been. But he said, I didn't plan on doing this for him until 2025. But tell him he just put a rush on things. And someone with a loud mouth help him right now. I don't know why I'm asking this. Who has the girl? You or you and her? Both? Yeah, because this is weird because I, I just saw two figures of, of a girl walk in, and the Lord told me to tell you this, so I'm going to tell you, then you can tell her, but I need y'all to scream louder for this. The Lord says, whatever spirit was coming against the girls, especially one of them, it leaves at midnight tonight. It's finished. <laughs> There will be no arguing, there will be no regrets, there will be no frustration, and somebody is not screaming up in this tent.
hold that neighbor's hand. You married? How old are you? 25? Somebody called you baby sis. Who over there? That's your blood sister? But yet she feels that she is. Okay. Because Dr. Dr. Brown, I need your hands. Are you a member of this church? Hope City, who's the pastor? All right, come here. I need your hands. When I, when I, hello, look at me. When I tell you to lay hands on her, you're doing it for two reasons. Number one, hear me, pastor. She's the female Noah of your church. They tried to kill her. They tried to talk about her. They trying to do everything. I'm not saying that you are. Are you a child? I'm not saying that you are. Hear me clear. You are not married and you have children. When you touch her, counsel her because her husband's coming. After she fully clears the way. When you touch her, all the pain will be gone, all of the regret, but she will have to make way for who God has for her. Number two, you're going to think I'm crazy and so will your church. If you touch her and you want her blessed, God says, you might as well look at your new church building. God said, nobody will tell you what to do when I lose this one right here. I don't hear nobody talking, but I'm just doing what I'm Go ahead and lay hands on her. All right, Dr. Brown, let's hold hands with someone, and I'm done for tonight. We have so much to do. Yes. Oh, I thought you were sending him to me. Yeah. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Sean, get on there and play something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Play softly. And what key is that? F sharp. Come on. Hold your neighbor's hand and talk to God for your neighbor. Come on. Talk to God. All musicians. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Come on. Sooner or later, turn in your favor. It's turning around. It's turning around. Yeah, whoever that is, thank you. Take it from the top. It won't always. It won't People don't know it. One more time. Y'all help him. Come on. What will the Lord do?
your favor. It's turning around for me. Bowed, eyes closed, play softly. I need 50 of us tonight. I'm going to be the first one because I don't want Pastor to pull tonight. I want us to give $100 to men. I want you to at least give 30 as your minimum tonight. Holy music, I just now I'm, now I'm hearing God for real. He said, tell him, don't ask, command them. Command ye the blessing. I'm going to tell you all that are having financial issues, it's going to be paid in full. You have to trust Brother Todd. I am on something else in the Holy Ghost, and the Lord said, tell them I'm here for them, but they must trust me. They must. God has blessed some of us, and I'll be one to admit to be living exceeding abundantly above. So to give $100 is like giving 20 cents for me. So I'm going to give more than that. But to whom much is given, come on, talk to me, General Assembly. To whom much is given, so I need everybody, Pastor, I need you to stand right here. 